Well, Happy New Year, my friends. This is the first episode of the Significant Women podcast for 2024. If you're a faithful listener, you know the routine. You know that usually I'm interviewing a woman with a riveting story of how she got through pain, discouragement, a storm in life with hope and joy and purpose on the other side. Today's podcast is going to be just a little bit different than that because I'm going to be sharing my heart with you about the coming year. I want to help you live a dynamic life in 2024. I have a love-hate relationship with the phrase New Year's resolutions. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know I need to change. I know I need to develop some new habits, new resolve, new disciplines, but it's just so hard. And so that phrase, New Year's resolutions, is just a little bit like fingernails on the chalkboard of life, is it not? However, the other side of the coin is this I'm not content with the me that I am or the me that I have been. I want to live wholeheartedly every day of my life for the unshakable gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm all in and I want to be healthy physically so I live a long time so I can partner with Christ. I want to embrace healthy thinking patterns. I want to take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. I want to develop healthy relationships in my family, in my friendships. Um, I want to love wholeheartedly, forgive quickly, choose joy daily. I want to sing my way through life. And so if that's the life I want, then something needs to change in me. And so I need to make a New Year's resolution or two. I need to change in order to live the life of my dreams and the life that God has for me. Life is a journey. It's a process. And it's okay to realize you need to change. You need to shore some things up in your life. You need to resolve to do a few things just a little bit differently. Um, So today, on today's Significant Women podcast, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about becoming new, about changing old habits and patterns in life and developing and even cultivating a brand new lifestyle so that new things will grow in us and out of us. Listen, we all need to change. There's not one of us listening who does not need to change. Every single one of us has places of weakness, of sin, of compromise that need to go. We just need to be done with those things in 2024. Um, All of us have shortcomings, addictions, habits, and attitudes that, quite frankly, are not healthy. They are not bringing out the best in us. You know, the real problem is, for me, I can can only speak for me, but I, I think you'll agree, is we don't know how to change. How do I change? I don't know how to get from here to there. I'm not a surgeon. I cannot perform a heart transplant on me, but God can. God can change my heart if I just ask him to do so. Um, One of my problems is I don't know how to connect the old dots to the new way of living. So today we're going to talk about two different types of change. The, The first type of change we're going to talk about is the type of change that we have the power to enact in our lives. The second kind of change we're going to talk about is the things we have no power over, the things that are out of our control, because there are both things going on in our lives today. So there's the type of change that we say, I can do it. I got this. And then there's the type of change that we can say, I can't do this. I don't have this. Two different kinds of change. So first of all, Let's talk about the change that we can do. It is within our power to make this kind of change. Um, So I want you to finish this sentence. The one thing that I would change about myself is blank. Fill in the blank. What is the one thing that you would change about yourself? 
write something down that you have the power to change. Don't write in something. Don't think about something that you have no power over. Don't write in, I want a husband. I want my adult children to react differently. Don't write in those things. Write in something that you have the power to change. Your weight, getting out of debt. You need a better job, a better marriage. Um, You need to deal with fear and worry in a different way. You want to live a healthier life. Um, So write down, think about something you have the power to change. Now, how do you change this thing about yourself? Now, I'm going to totally confuse you for a minute, but hang with me because in a minute you're going to have an aha moment. What's that one thing that you have the power to change about yourself? Even though you can do it, you can't do it. Um, You can't do it without the power of Jesus Christ surging through every fiber of your being. You know, you might've heard me say this before. One of my pet peeves in life are all these little mugs, all these cutesy little sayings that say, you're enough. You got this because you know what? You're not enough. Without Jesus Christ, you are not enough. You are not enough in your own strength to change the things that you should be able to change. Even what you can do, you can't do without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why if there's something about you that you want to change your weight, the way you think, the way you talk, the way you treat people. You have to go back to the basics of your faith whenever you want to enact a certain change in your life. Let's read Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. If you want to lose weight, if you want to get out of debt, if you want to be done with anxiety and worry, if you want to love people well, what you really need to do is change your focus in life. You need to get your eyes off of your problem, off of your weakness, off of your inability to change, and you need to look to Jesus Christ. Um, But you have to do more than just look at him. That's where it begins, your focus. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You have to follow hard after him. The word for seek is a powerful Greek word. It's the Greek word zeteo. We get the word zealot from this Greek word zeteo. Let me read you some of the definitions of this Greek word zeteo. A relentless pursuit of something or someone. Nothing distracts you. Nothing intimidates you. Nothing gets in the way. Nothing moves you from the object that you are seeking. My friend, you will find that when you zeteo the unshakable kingdom of Jesus Christ, when you zeteo all that Christ is, you will change in the process. You will change in the zeteo. The Zeteo will change you. What used to distract you, annoy you, intimidate you, or burden you is left behind when you Zeteo Jesus Christ. When you Zeteo something, it's all that you can think about. From early morning to late at night, you dream about what you Zeteo. Seek first the unshakable kingdom of God and his righteousness. So stop thinking about your husband snoring, the low number in your bank account, the high number on the scale, and let your gaze be fixed on Jesus Christ. Think about him and how you can serve his unshakable kingdom. I can guarantee you that when you Zeteo Christ, you will change indeed. Let me read to you one of the most well-known scripture verses in the entire New Testament. And you will understand why I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse doesn't say you can do everything. It says you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength to do 
the all things. Yes, you can do this because you can change. You can change because of Christ. You can change because of Zateo. You can change because he's got strength for you that you would never, ever have on your own. You don't change in your own strength. You cannot do all things in your own strength. But when you Zateo, when you focus on Christ, when you seek after him with every fiber in your being, there is a download of strength that will come your way. So the word that we read for strength in Philippians 4, 13 is the Greek word, and do na ma'o, and do na ma'o. And it's an explosive power that's being deposited into some type of container or vessel. I kid you not, that is the definition. It's not just an, let me say that again. It's not just an explosive power, but it's an explosive power that was meant to be deposited into some type of container or vessel. And you are the container or vessel that this explosive power was meant to be deposited in. You have been designed by your creator. You have been designed by your creator to be the receptacle of this divine power. There's nothing like it. All that he is, all that he has is aimed at your life. The way you open yourself up to him is through Zateo, is through seeking after him. Now, let me go back to confusing you for just a minute because we're talking about the things that we do have the power to change, the things that are not beyond our control. Um, We can't change these things without a change in our focus, without a change in what we're seeking after in life. So take what you want to change your weight, your finances, your job, your relationships, your thought patterns. Take that off the front burner. Put that on the back burner of your life and put Christ on the front burner. Think about him. Let him be at full boil every single day of your life. And when you've done that, instantly you have the power to change the thing that you thought you could change, but really you couldn't change. I hope that made some sense to you. Once you've set the proper priorities, Jesus Christ, Zateo him, get a download of his explosive power. Once you Zateo Christ, the power is given back to you. Okay, let's read another verse about this thing that you have the power to change. Psalm 119 verse 109 says this. This is a head scratching verse. It says, my life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. Your life is in your hand. Now, you might say, Carol, I thought my life was in God's hand. Well, it is, but he's also given you a will. He's given you the power of choice. You have been given freedom of choice by the one who made you. He doesn't force anything on you. He wants the absolute best for you, but he's not going to force it on you. You get to choose. Your life is in your hand. You get to choose how you talk to people. You get to choose the thoughts that you think. You get to choose how you spend your money, what you put in your mouth. You get to choose whether you forgive someone or not. Um, You choose whether or not to go to college. You choose what you're going to watch on TV. You choose what music you're going to listen to. You you get to choose whether you exercise or not. You choose. Your life is in your hand. Now, God wants you to choose according to the principles that are in the Bible. This verse, Psalm 119, 109 says, My life is continually in my hand. Nevertheless, I do not forget your law, God's law. That's the Bible. Um, God doesn't want you to forget his principles or his promises or the plans that he has laid out for your life. But you have the ability to choose. You can choose what God wants or what you want or what the culture says is good. You get to choose. Your life is in your hand. So what kind of life will you choose? It's a good question, isn't it? 
Will you choose to be in bondage to food and to spending, to bitterness, to anger, to anxiety, to worry, to fear? Um, will you choose to be um, in constant emotional pain because of past abuse, because of regret? Or will you choose to live according to the principles in the Bible? Will you zateo all that he is and all that he has for you? It's up to you. You choose. I can't choose for you and you can't choose for me. Okay, now let's make it practical. Let me give you the one, two, okay? How do you change the things that you can change, but you really can't change? How do you change those things? It's a two-step process. You zateo Christ and then the power comes in. That's step number one. Step number two is you choose. Don't choose before you have the power though. Zateo Christ. Receive his power and it's going to help you make healthier choices in life. Okay, let, let me keep being practical with you. This is how you can zateo Christ. Receive his strength so that you make better choices. One, read your Bible every day, my friend. This is not rocket science. Spend time with the object of your greatest affection. His name is Jesus. So open your Bible and read it. Read the love letter that he has written to you. If, if you don't do this one thing in 2024, nothing else will really matter. Spend time with Jesus. Open the Bible, drink it in, meditate on it, memorize it. Reading the Bible is not a have to, but it's a get to. Um, the second thing you can do in your Zateo process is buy a journal and create a prayer journal. Write down the people's names you're praying for. Pray for people with scriptures beside their names. Notate the days your prayers are answered. Um, some of my treasures this side of heaven are the prayer journals I've created over the work, over the years. And when my faith is sinking, I open a prayer journal and I remind myself of what God has done. The third thing you can do is spend time in worship every day. Crank up the worship music. Get your worship on. Open your mouth, even if you're singing off key, and worship the Lord. And then, let me tell you this, the things that you value, you'll give to. You will give to the things that you value in life. So make it a goal to give more to the unshakable kingdom of Christ in 2024 than you have any other year of your life. Give your time, give your talents, give your finances to the unshakable kingdom of Jesus Christ. So Zateo Christ, let the strength come in and then you choose. Choose to read your Bible, choose to pray, choose to worship, and choose to give and see what God will do with that. Okay, I'm going to get back to this conversation in just a minute about how to create the 2024 of your dreams and of God's plans for your life. But first of all, I'd just like to tell you about one thing that's going on at Carol McLeod Ministries. I would love to personally invite you to be part of my 20th annual Carol McLeod Ministries Women's Conference. I have to pinch myself. 20 years have gone by since we've been encouraging women of New York State. But now we're at the point where women from all across the country come. Women from Canada come down. And I'd love for you to join us April 26th, 27th at Life Church Buffalo. The theme this year is overflowing living abundantly in a broken culture. At this year's conference, we will be taping my new Bible study based on the book of Colossians. It's a deep dive into this incredible book in the Bible that never grows old, but that has riveting and exciting principles for us today. So pack some women in your car, buy a plane ticket, and come to this conference. You can find more about it at my website, which is carolmcleodministries.com. Now listen, you can either come in person or you can watch digitally. Either one is an option. We would love to have you join us for this annual event 
that's life-changing, breathtaking. You'll make new friends. You'll worship your heart out. You'll hear the word of God taught, and you'll be prayed for. Who wouldn't want to join a conference like that? Okay, back to the change that we would like to enact in our lives in 20. 24. As you ponder the new year and what you have the power to change, um, the second type of change is the change that's out of your control. The, I can't do that, Carol. I don't have that kind of power in my life. Let's talk about some of those things. Maybe you want to get married, but you're still single and you feel powerless. Maybe you're dealing with infertility. You want to get pregnant so badly but the babies just aren't coming. Maybe there's a girl at work who hates you and you can't change her. Maybe you've had terrible abuse in your past. You can't change your past. Um, Maybe this abuse haunts you. Maybe you want to live closer to your children, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So write it down in your notes. This is what I wish I could change, but I don't have the power to change. Write that phrase down. What do you wish you could change? But you can't. You have no control over it. So step number one in this process of changing what you can't change is the same thing as step number one in the things you could change. Zateo. If you are frustrated, if you've been in a meanwhile, if you've been waiting in life and nothing's changing, you can do something. You can zateo. You can seek after the Lord with every fiber of your being. Now, in this situation, when you're dealing with things that you don't have control over, how do you zateo the Lord? Well, first of all, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says to pray without ceasing. My friend, never give up praying for this situation to change. When you pray, Heaven stands to their feet in anticipation and hell shudders because they know that the prayers of the saints get the attention of God Almighty. So pray without ceasing over these situations, which it seems like are out of your control. The second thing I want to tell you to do, I tell women to do this all the time, all across America, get a fighting verse. Find a verse and declare it over your situation. Pray this verse, sing this verse, write it out, put it on your bathroom mirror, put it on the dashboard of your car, put it on your computer screen, choose a fighting verse and then fight with it. And then the third thing is worship your way through these unyielding circumstances in life. Out sing your storm, sing louder then your pain is complaining. Worship the God who's making all things new. Worship separates the old from the new. Worship creates a line in the sand of your life. And you say, I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus, not on my unchangeable circumstances in life. You can say, I'm done with the old. I'm done focusing on frustration. I'm going to focus on hope today. Worship takes your eyes off of the old and places them on the God who makes all things new. Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 says, and he who sits on the throne said, behold, I'm making all things new. And he said, right, for these words are faithful and true. If you don't like your circumstances, stop talking about them. Stop focusing on them. Stop looking at them. Stop being paralyzed by them and begin to worship Zateo the Lord. And then the second thing I want to tell you to do as you're dealing with circumstances that you have no control over, do something new. Do do something outrageously new. Apply for a new job. Go to the gym. Make a new friend. Read a new book. Teach Sunday school, volunteer in the church nursery, visit a nursing home, have someone to your home for dinner, slip a single mom a $20 bill, sign up to go on a mission trip, send a teenager or a young adult on a mission trip, do something new, keep a prayer journal, go for a walk, clean out a closet, join a Bible study or a small 
group, develop a new hobby, uh, just do it. You do something new. Instead of complaining about your old, get busy and create something new. What is the new thing that you can do? Write it in your notes today. I've asked you a couple significant questions. What is the one thing you would change about your life? Change it. That was question number one. Question number two is, what is the one thing you can't change about your life? And question number three is, what is the one new thing you can do? In closing today, let me say this. Change will not come to your life as long as you're focused on circumstances. Change will only come when you're focused on Christ, when you zateo him and all that he is. Um, Does that sound strange to you? It might sound strange, but it's the truth. Give up yourself, surrender, and you will find who you were created to be. Give up your preferences and your opinions and your disappointment and your personal pain. Just give it away. Lay it at the foot of the cross and you will find him in whose presence there's always fullness of joy. Things, stuff, and change, they don't bring fulfillment. They, he's the one who brings fulfillment. Zateo him every day of 2024. Matthew chapter 16, verse 25 says, For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. It sounds like a phenomenal plan for 2024. You can do it. You can change when you zateo Christ. Um, I love this quote by one of my heroes of the faith, C.S. Lewis. This is what he said in his book, Mere Christianity. Look for yourself and you will find in the long run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin, and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him and with him, everything else thrown in. Well, as I close this premiere episode of the Significant Women podcast for 2024, I want to close it by reading you a passage of scripture from Philippians chapter four. I'll not be reading every verse from this chapter, but verses that I think will be a grand start to your new year. Philippians chapter four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report. If there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father, be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Well, I have loved encouraging you in your faith today. And if today's episode has encouraged you in any way, I'd love to invite you to leave a a rating or review on whatever platform you've listened to this podcast on. I'd love for you to watch our podcasts on our YouTube channel, Carol McLeod Ministries. And don't forget about the app for your smartphone. Today is a new day to serve the Lord. This is a new year to serve the Lord. You get to write a brand new story this year, so make it a good one. I'll see you next time on the Significant Women Podcast.